Okay, hey everybody, as promised, this is the Elephant Truck Nebula, but first, I uh, hope you guys are doing all okay out there, and, uh, and Merry Christmas, Merry Early Christmas, it's uh, December 23rd, so hopefully I will get this uh, video uh, processed and edited and out before Christmas, but I'm not making any promises, you guys might be getting cold, I don't know, anyway, as promised, this is the Elephant Truck Nebula <clears throat> that I shot with the William Optics Z61 and the ASI 1600 MM Pro. And just wanted to kind of go over uh, some new techniques I'm using uh, to get to the final image. You know, it's always, process is always organic. I'm always learning. There's always new tools coming out. Blur Exterminator. And so, yeah, so we're going to be using uh, some new stuff, some new stretching techniques, some new uh, star manipulation techniques to get to the final image here today. So, I'm going to try to leave this image as wide as I can, even though it is going to take a little extra time to do that. But uh, here we go. Let's jump into it. So as you can see on the screen, HA data, <clears throat> S2 data, and O3 data. As usual, O3 has got some bright corners and very little signal, but good enough. I believe this is about 30 hours combined. And I would say probably... 15 of that would be the HA. Okay. So they are, let's double check because I'm so bad. Like I'm so bad. I used to be bad at stacking separately, but with the new WBPP, um, I don't. Works out a whole lot better. So they are registered. I guess that's, yeah, I did register them. So they're star aligned. Uh, and now it's just to decide how I want to crop them. And I always like to use my highest signal to noise. Uh, data to to crop and honestly ain't cropping <laughs> it's good it's good let's minimize these we're gonna use our where'd you go s2 where are you hiding that buddy we're gonna use the hydrogen as our template for dbe do a background extraction on this thing uh, so we're gonna come up here to process background modelization dynamic background extraction now there is a ton of nebulosity in this image there's very little background sky so we're not going to put a whole lot of points we're going to click the image to link the two make a little love connection here uh, i want to always adjust my tolerance up i want to be more tolerant i should be more tolerant in life anyway uh we're going to start at 1.5 drop down this list of sample generation it's it's choosing this default sample size of 29 so um, I think that's gonna be okay so I'm just holding down the space bar looking around I'm just gonna put a sample right up here in the corner and I'm looking for the darkest areas of the image even though this is dark nebula dude I don't know what this is man but I just want to process that right there this like one of these days I'm just gonna do that because that is like tricky. I don't know if that word applies to this. Anyway, we're just gonna go along. We're gonna put the uh, sample generation points not on stars. We're not gonna make them too big. I'm just gonna move along here. Get them in the background areas. We're just telling pics in sight. We think this is background based on our knowledge of the night sky and this is what we want you to sample picks in sight and picks in sight says i captain uh yeah so see we didn't do many i really don't i really want to stay away from these higher signal to noise ratio areas uh, just because i don't want to deplete them uh so let's back out here see not a lot uh, but we can come back down here and target image correction. And we're going to do division. And I do not want to see the background model. And I'm going to hit the green check mark. We're going to see what, what it comes up with. I've got the STF already down here. So I can hit the... Ooh! See the difference? Big time. Uh, so this is our new HA data. And we can double click on that... Uh, the identifier tab there, and we can just type HA. Gonna shorten up these tabs, minimize it. And let's move it over here to our little space. So now that we know that works, we're gonna drag our instance off. 
put it right there and that has all of the sample points set on it so that is very loud whatever uh okay so we can delete this image and we're going to open up the o3 o3 might need a little more work on it so let's minimize that let's do the s2 s2 and ha mimic each other quite a bit uh, so all we got to do now is just double double click on that instance you ever have trouble double clicking like your finger just doesn't want to work uh, so I, the simple points look good there so let's hit the green check mark and see what it comes out with yes I like it let's double click on the title and we're just gonna name it s2 and we're gonna close the old s2 image let's open up o3 and we're gonna see what these sample points do um, now one thing to notice if you're doing this and you see in your sample points red you're gonna to need to increase your tolerance until everybody's green so let's just run it and see usually o3 is the hardest <laughs> Merry Christmas all right so that one worked out great didn't need to do any adjustment on our dynamic background extraction sample points so o3 Renaming it. Okie dokie. Close it down. And let's close the tool. Now, uh, here is, is uh, technique number one. I have found that running a linear fit is something a lot of people do, and I do when I'm doing RGB, but I found if I use a linear fit and use my S2 data, which would go in the red channel, as the uh, target image, it seems to start to push the green back from the very get go. So, yeah, I don't have as much green to fight. It's already starting to create that Hubble palette look because I have linear fit the HA and the O3 to the S2. But before I do that, I'm going to double click on the HA. I'm going to drag off a clone. I'm going to use that as luminance. Let's name that. L-U-M, loom. Okay. We're going to save you for later. Put you over here. Watch some TV. All right, so we're going to drag our S2 image and put it in here as our reference image. Open up R3. Take the instance. Drop it on. Don't worry about what it looks like. It's all going to work out just fine. So let's open up the HA, do the same thing. Take the instance, drop it on. All right, minimize it. Let's close the tool. We're going to open up a channel combination. And we're going to drag them over in the standard Hubble palette. The old tried and true. Uh, so O3 in the blue, HA in the green, and S2 in the red. Click the global button, and it spits out an image. So let's do a automatic stretch here. See what I mean? I think before, even though, and that's all the channels linked. So if I unlink them, see, it's even better, right? And you guys know, if you've done this before and you have all your channels linked and you have that dominant HA, you just get a big green Hulk smash image. But right now I've almost got a really better, I think, beginning of getting that green back like we want, you know? So. Let me know in the comments if you try this and you find the same thing. I have not found this to work for every data set, but especially stronger data sets works really well. So enough of that. That's what we're doing. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to this right now other than stretch it. I think I'm, I'm done with that. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to try to push the green back right now. I'm just going to stretch it and probably remove the stars yes we're gonna stretch and remove the stars uh, so right now in the next new technique does it come in here to script utilities and come down to generalize hyperbolic stretch this is a plugin um, you're more than welcome to go look it up it's real easy you guys should know by now how to put these new um, scripts in so let's double click on the script uh, this is image 13 and I'm telling you, I, I really didn't like this at first. I downloaded, I watched a video and I was like, eh, okay. But after using it, I, I think this is the only way I'm going to stretch for a while, unless I come up with something better. 
It was just really, really is awesome, especially for stars, keeping those stars in check. It's the whole name of the game. All right, so uh, target view, we want to drop down that list here and choose our image. And it's gonna say, do you wanna turn off the screen stretch? Yes, we do. I think I kind of showed this on my last video. I was like, eh, eh, you can use it if you want. Yeah, I'm using it. We can slide this zoom and all this is, is zooming in on our histogram here. Slide it in just to see it a little bit better. And then the stretch factor down here, what I want to do is I want to start applying a stretch to it. You're going to see that red line come up. It's familiar, it's starting to stretch. So everything back here would be black sky. This is up. Most of this is black sky. Very little of this is data. And you're going to see how much actually is data. And that was the interesting thing. So you're starting to see the image reveal itself before you just keep stretching and you want to get to that point see that's a little too much you want to get to the point where you like the background you like the brightness of the background that's what i've found that being said i want to pick an area out here where i can tell that there's background or darker parts of the sky and then i start to migrate into some nebulosity okay, so probably something right in here and i want to draw just click on it and draw a box and then it's going to be a zoom preview. See, we've zoomed into it. So you can see I've got nebula here. I've got eh, very faint nebula here. So I'm just going to click one time. And that's going to put a sample point, just kind of like DBE. I'm going to move that in until I see some of the fainter nebulosity. So and you can see when I'm doing that, you see up here, you see these values change. So I'm going to say right about there. And that what it's doing is that is going to be the baseline that's the nebula it's going to show first salvage so i've found knowing this i see a lot more faint nebulosity in my final images than i ever have so let's pick that point right there what we're going to do is that value of point not 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 85 we're going to send that value to sp meaning that's our symmetry point right here see it says 0 0.0085 so we can click out, back out of the zoom and now what we want to do is we want to adjust our local stretch intensity and you're going to see it's going to flatten out but you see this yellow line let's zoom in here a little bit more so basically what it's saying is that yellow line is 0 0.000 wait that's too many zeros point triple zero eight five so what it's saying is all of this hump is really background sky and stuff and, and stuff we're not really interested in trying to bring forward. So the rest of this would be data. And sometimes you'll see that line way over here. You're going to like, man, all that's garbage. Yeah. all that's garbage. This is all we're interested in. So we're just going to flatten it out. And you know, any, in a range from 5.6, well, five to 10 would be where you're going to be at. This works great for galaxies too, by the way. Uh, so we're going to choose that level right there. We like it. We're going to hit the green check bar or green check bar check mark and accept it. And now that applies the first stretch to our image. You can see the image over here. It's been stretched. But look at our stars. Nice and tight. You see this with just like any other tool reset it. Okay. You see that? God, you know, I don't know the name of the star. I probably should. See, it's not uh, obnoxious. It's in check. Okay, so now we, we've basically created our floor. We've said this is the faint nebulosity that we want to bring up and we want to hold it at that. And now we want to take the rest of this nebula, the brighter portions, and we want to bring them forward. That creates a nice S curve and that creates depth and that creates contrast. Okay? Contrast. So I don't really necessarily need to zoom in. I'm just going to go and I'm going to pick that point right there. Actually, let me stop. I'm going to close out of it. I don't want to see the log. I'm going to go ahead and correct these magenta stars. So I'm going to come here to script, utilities, uh, correct magenta stars. And it really corrects everything. All right, so I got all that magenta out of it. And the next thing I think I'm going to do before we dive back into GHS 
is I think I'm going to go ahead and pull the stars. And the reason being is I very rarely in my new processing workflow, I very rarely use the, the colored stars. I use the luminant stars that pick up the color in the background. Uh, and so I'm not really fighting a bunch of yellow stars. If you're out there and you've processed SHO images and you're like, man, it looks good, but I got all these stinking golden stars. Like what the heck? This just gets rid of it. So let's go over here. Let's uh, bring in old Russell Croman. He's a badass. Uh, we are not going to generate uh, a star image. It's just a star exterminator, by the way. And we're going to go ahead and remove the stars. We'll be back in two and two. Oof. Russell Croman, your tools are amazing. Uh, okay, stars are gone. So let's open back up. Uh, script utilities and generalized hyperbolic stretch and there are some different stretch types down here just so you know there's histogram there's arc sign stretch arc sign arc sign, arc, oh, whatever uh, there's oodles of different stretches I have not used any of these in within this tool I've used them all separately I just leave it default to the generalized GHS all right, <clears throat> so once again, let's choose our image 13. Start bringing this, uh, bringing this bad boy up here. Cool, and we're gonna select this brighter region here. Don't forget to send your value. Send it, send it. Like that package you didn't send for Christmas. Like me. Okay, so now we are going to adjust our stretch, stretch factor because we didn't stretch before and you can see the image is getting brighter we're lifting the image here and you're just wanting to look at it uh i like that so let's select it <clears throat> we're just adjusting this incrementally okay and once again you got to reset it here uh, the other thing we can do in here is we can click saturation and boost our saturation within here. You can see that happening. Cool. Accept that. All right. Reset the tool. Let's choose a little brighter area. Send that value down. And we're brightening up even more. Where is she just starting to come to life here? We still got some green, but look, because we did that linear fit, we're not really fighting a, a monstrously green image. What? Look at that. <clears throat> Let's reset it. Let's, uh, zoom in on the old elephant here. Let's click right there that's a bright spot you can see every time we click or we click here you see this line is moving back and basically that line right there is indicating uh, where in the histogram this data falls so we want to choose that little bright spot and that's really going to give us our highlights let's send that value let's reset the stretch factor here and now this is a good thing to show you. You see how everything else has gotten brighter and the background now is starting to get dark because now you can see this formulation of an S curve because we're boosting the brighter limits up here. And within like galaxies and other things, sometimes this background can get a little too dark once you start doing that because this dip here in your linear state or your, what am I trying to say? Lord have mercy in your stretch that's actually starting to push the background down so this shadow point protection you can slide it forward and it just kind of lifts that back end up if you find that your darker areas are getting too dark so let's accept that all right I think I'm good right there. I don't want to really oversaturate it too much. I'm going to go ahead and close out of the tool. Yes. And now I still have some green. I'm going to show you another way of getting rid of that green. 
SCNR is a great tool, but what it does is it kills a lot of the luminance that the green provides. So instead, let's come in here to curves. Let's open up um, a real-time preview. We're going to see how we got some kind of fuzziness in the back. I I've noticed that with GHS, and, and I usually end up getting a great image, especially if I leave the stars in, and I'll show you that when we do the luminance. But sometimes I want a little more separation here. So I'm just going to drop this back end down. I'm going to raise it up. And that's going to give me that fall off that I'm looking for. Let's see right there. And I can actually just kind of brighten the principal portion of this. So I've just created a small little S curve in here. And I'm going to open up my hue. And you see, I've got green here. You see it coincides up here on this side of the line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to surround it like a SWAT team. I'm going to pin the line and it is going to get a little curvy. I'm going to come ahead of the green up here, right there. Basically what I'm doing is I'm holding that line down. So then I'm going to come right here. You know, if I click, you can see there's all that green is right in there. So if I just take this and drag it. You can see it really just kind of pulled that green and made it more teal. So you're going that way actually really kills that green out. Actually turns out to all yellow. So that's a good way to kind of get rid of your blue. You can see now we have a good contrast. Um, and the other thing we can do is actually just come in here to the green channel itself and just pull it down a little bit. And accept that. And we might grab that green and just pull it down one more time. Ooh, ooh lovely. I like to leave a little green in my images. Um, I just like to. It's just personal preference, okay? Get over it. Uh, and it, it appears that I've got quite a bit of like. What, would, what I would consider magenta along these edges in here. So we can go to the real time preview. Let's sit. Let's run our process of correcting magenta stars again. Because guess what? It's not just for the stars. It's just the magenta. Execute it. Yeah. See what it looks like. It's a little better. Agree? All right. So we got a, a very colorful image. We've got great color. We left a little green in here, but not too much. Um, you know, if we want to use a color mask to isolate this center portion of it, you're more than welcome. So you can come in here to script, utilities, and get a color mask. I would choose maybe cyan and blur the mask. Let's see what we get. I'm just going off on a tangent. I went like that. Yeah, so you see that's really grabbing that central point here. Um, I typically convolute the mask even more, which means to blur it. And now I can really work on that center portion. Look, I was like, yeah, you can do that, and I'm doing it. <laughs> uh, mask, and we're gonna do show mask. Open up curves. We can pull our green down. Right there. You can also take this B component and push it up. Actually, sorry, pull it down. Not push it up. And that really gives us, got rid of that green, gives us more blue. We can actually lighten it up just a little bit. I never have been a big proponent in, in a very strong blue. See, that would be too much there. I like that. Okay. Um, let's close that out. And we're gonna, right, I've always, that's how I'm accessing this. I'm right clicking on the image and accessing my mask tool. So mask, and I'm going to say remove mask. And I can open the image back up and blur it. Real time preview. Just gonna push it over here. 
We're gonna blur the crap out of it. Make it smooth, man. Smooth. Alrighty. So our color image is done. Push it down here. I don't know that we need this mask anymore. We can put it. I like a clean house. Okay, fun times. Luminance. This is where all of our details and garbage come in. So now it's been a lot of controversy out there in the astrophotography world. If you've been anywhere near Facebook, you've seen the scads of blur exterminated images coming in. You're like, holy crap. And I'm, I'm a holy crapper. Yeah. That sounded weird. Anyway, for this image here, you could use it. But I don't know that you'd see the effects. If you wanted to process just this guy, I think that's when you want to use it. But all the way out, eh, nah. I mean, you might be able to see it, but you'd really, you'd have to pinch and zoom and really, and really look into it to resolve what it does. Not saying it's a great tool, it is, uh, especially for galaxies. It's amazing for galaxies. Um, but, for this image, I'm not going to go through the process. I will probably do a galactic image, maybe M51 that I did, that I was like, like that. So I'll do that in the next video. All right. Keep you watching. But I am going to call him back later. Uh, I am going to use the noise exterminator on this. And the noise exterminator actually will do some sharpening as well, believe it or not. So let's open up Russell Croman's noise exterminator. exterminator. I am going to go ahead and boost those details to the low 30s. I'm going to leave the denoise set at 0.9. Let's drop it on to our preview. And let's go in here, uh, Control Shift and Z. I'll be able to see it too much. Ooh, look at that. Before, after. And you see we don't lose any of the detail. I mean, let's just process that. You want to? <laughs> uh, okay. But you see noise exterminator. And that's the funny thing too about noise exterminator is that's what it does. And to me, it almost gives the appearance that you've shot way more data than you actually have. I would say it adds 25% just because of how it smooths out the signal. Uh, so is that wrong? I don't know. Is Russell a witch? He might be. Oh, all right. So let's go ahead and dump that on there. Okay, hey, that is done. Close the tool. I'm gonna right click on the preview and say delete. And we're gonna stretch. Just that easy, right? Uh, but this time we're leaving the stars in. So let's really see what this thing does. Let's come back up here to script, utilities, GHS. And we're going to say new view selected. So we're gonna come down here to our HA clone. Yes. So HA clone, once again, we can zoom in on our histogram somewhere in there. There it is there. We're going to adjust our stretch factor over. Whoa. See, too bright. Let's back it off. Like I said, we just want to get it to the point where we like the background right there. And then you can really see now the luminance, uh, the faint nebulosity around in here. Uh, with just this HA, so let's do a let's go right down here in this corner. You can see here's our dark, here's our faint in here. Let's just set a point right here. We're going to send that value to uh, our symmetry point. We're going to click back out of it, and then we're going to start to flatten out that curve. You can see the center part of the nebula getting dimmer, but you can actually see all this faint nebulosity around here staying pretty proud, which is which is hard to do a lot of times. It's easy to stretch that bright stuff. So it's a good flat image, but look, look at our stars have been uh, wrangled in. We've got good contrast in some of these lower signal areas. Uh, so let's accept that. And ah, let's reset the tool. Let's go here. We're going to grab that area right there. We're going to send that value. We're going to start boosting it up. 
Let me go ahead and reset our zoom too. So you can see how our background's starting to get really, really dark here. So let's push this shadow point over to right there. Accept it. And you're just doing iterations of this. Reset the tool. Maybe that right there is just a little bit brighter. Bump it up a little bit. Like it. Accept it. Reset the tool. Try to grab this little brighter area right here. Oops. Hold on. Look at me. Look at me doing exactly what I told you not to do. Just send that value down. I always want to make sure that symmetry point value is set because it's pinning the histogram. You can see if I stretch it, you see where it's just, it's basically creating that S curve along this data point line that we set here. Now you're getting into incrementally changing this. I'm talking, you're not dragging this thing over. You're doing it in fractions of a tick. Somewhere in there. So you see we've got uh, a good showing in the center, but you can see you can still see all this faint nebulosity back here. And our stars are uh, maintained pretty well. Okay. All right, let's reset the tool, let's close out of it. I think we stretched it just that quick too, you know? Got a great looking image here. The stars are all behaving. Even uh, even our big star here. Almost looks like it's got star spikes in it. I mean, look at that. What the heck's going on there? It's like a little pillars of creation. You ever just pan around your image and look at all the little nooks and crannies? A little elephant trunk still looks good. All right. Okay, focus. Uh, all right, let's minimize the tool. Let's bring up our color image. We're going to do a uh, RGB combination right here. Going to drag that luminance down. These guys check, look in the box, and they do the drop down list and they go find it. Eh, why? I mean, you can drag and drop, man. Uh, okay, so let's turn off our red, green, and blue channels. We're going to boost the saturation by bringing that slider to the left. I always say down, but it's just not. That's right, that's left. So bringing it to the left increases the uh, saturation. I do want to do some chrominance noise reduction when I apply it. I'm going to drag it on and drop it. All right, that's a pretty bright looking image, but we're going to correct that. But yeah, look, it's amazing, right? Uh, let's um, kill that. It's got great color. It's not oversaturated. But what we're going to do is we're going to take our HA clone. We're going to drop it onto the image here. We're going to open up our curves transformation. And we're going to put a little contrast in this. There. Cool. Okay. So for this point, I like it. I like the process that we've got going on here. I like our results. Uh, so let's remove the mask. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a luminance image. I'm going to invert it and kill just a little bit of this blue back here. Notice I've got a little blue in the background. So I'm going to drop that on. I'm going to say mask, I'm going to say invert mask, and I'm going to create a preview right up in here. I'm just noticing it's a little, see that background is a little too blue. So let's go back in here to curves, go into our blue channel, and just pull it down. You see that just kind of killed some of that background blue. Can't accept that because we're just doing it to the preview. Now we got to go and drag that on. Muy bien, much better. Bugging me. Mask. Okay. So we've got 
a great looking image here. So we're going to do another technique, which I'm really starting to dig here and requires to once again, pull the stars. Remember these stars are not color stars. These are just the luminous stars, but you can't really tell, right? I mean, look at this star, it looks yellow, All right? But let's pull our stars. This takes a little bit, but we do want to generate a star image and I'll show you how I'm going to put them back on. Here we go. All right. Our stars are gone. Let's uh, close the tool. Thank you, Russell. Appreciate it, bro. There's our stars. Okay, so here's the trick. And, and just as a warning, this is image manipulation for all you purists out there. Sorry. But we are going to do, what we're going to do is enhance the nebulosity. We're going to bring the nebulosity forward. What do I always say a great image uh, consists of is depth. And we're going to use that a new technique to create more depth. So what I'm going to do is go in here to range selection. I'm going to create a mask. And this mask is going to consist of highlights. So this portion here, some of this portion here, this portion here, but not here. We're not going to protect the darker areas. Click a real time preview. We're going to go to the lower limits and slide it over. So we're just looking at capturing the focus point, what we want to focus on, what our eyes to focus on in this nebula. And that's right about there. So let's smooth that out. Okay. And let's accept it. And I found range masks work way better than any other kind of mask. Uh, I think I want to blur that just a little bit more to so open up the convolution tool. Real term preview. We're going to jump right over here to the top part of the standard deviation. And put a little more blur on it. Okay. All right. So let's place the mask on. Minimize it. Let's right click on the image and say mask. And we're going to say show mask. So you see the brighter part of this image is being revealed, darker part is being protected. So we wanna right click on the image and we wanna say mask, invert mask. We wanna protect the brighter parts, not the darker parts. Mask, show mask. So now we're gonna put our stars back in. We're gonna come here to pixel math. Uh, we're gonna leave you single uh, RGBK expression checked. Open up the expression editor. And we're gonna say image 13. Double click on it, plus uh, image 13 stars. I'm gonna diminish the stars just a little bit and say times 0.8, okay? And click that. And the destination, let's do the drop down. It is set to replace. So let's drag and drop. So you see what it did is so up there, we're going to minimize that. It only put the stars in the background. There's no stars in the nebula. I'm like, what? Steve, hold on, buddy. Whoa, I was with you there for a while, but this is strange. Yeah, I know. I know. Now, what I want to do is I want to put the stars back in here. And what I'm trying to do is bring this nebula forward, right? And the stars actually tend to push your nebulosity back. So let's open or let's right click on the image, say mask and invert the mask. Now our darker areas where we just put the stars are protected. These areas right in here, where the brighter areas are not. Open up this pixel math. We're gonna put the stars back in, but we're gonna do it as like a 0.3. So we're really gonna diminish the stars. And drag and drop. So you can see it put them back in, but they're probably a little too dim. So this is where you're just gonna adjust that number. So let's boost that up to maybe 0.6. All right, so now we've got stars kind of in here. You can really see these stars popping in here. Uh, but what it did is it really brought that nebula forward to me. Okay. So we're going to minimize that. Mask. And we're going to remove the mask. So the next thing I want to do to really get this thing to pop even more is I want to create another range mask. Get everything in here. The stars. And what I'm looking to do is get 
most of the nebula and the bigger stars. You see these stars like this, I want to protect them. So I'm going to start to smooth that out. And when I smooth that out, you see the dimmer stars in the background almost start to get covered up, right? So we just want to protect the brighter stars. And this isn't probably the best image for this because the stars are so small. But if you've zoomed in and you've got some really big stars, this works really well. So we like that. We see some of these bigger stars are being protected. Let's accept that. We're not really going to do anything to manipulate that mask too much. We're just going to place it on. So let's look at what it's doing here. Right click, mask, show mask. So right now what it's doing is it is not protecting what we want to protect. It's actually leaving the brighter parts vulnerable. So we want to right click on it, say mask and invert mask. So you can see a lot of these brighter stars are being protected. The main portion of the nebula is being protected, but some of these fainter stars back here aren't being protected. And that's what we want. Mask, uh, show mask. So we're going to do a preview right about here, right? We're going to see our stars. You can see that really bright yellow star is really behaving. So what we want to do is open up our convolution tool and we're going to blur it. And if you've ever looked at images where you know, oh my gosh, this is 3D, what like human beings, we see 3D. And the reason we see 3D is because whatever we're focusing on is in focus and the background is blurry, right? Uh, a lot of animals like white-tailed deer don't see 3D. They see 2D. Everything's in focus or everything's blurry. So we are able to determine depth. Huh, there's that word again. So what we're going to do is open up um, convolution tool, do a real-time preview of that preview window. And we're going to move this lower limit over. And we're just going to create a little bit of blurriness. Now you see this portion of the nebula is still sharp back around here. Is still blurry or has become just slightly blurry and this is going to really give our image some depth um, we like that so let's close the real-time preview let's go back in here to the image let's drag and drop and i warned you i warned you so from youtube land you're not going to go oh my gosh i totally see what he's doing it's it's subtle i'm not doing anything drastic mask remove mask cool now we're going to do one more step and unfortunately he's protecting us unfortunately this is going to require photoshop I'm sorry uh you can leave it like this or you can go and follow me in the photoshop um we generated a star image which is image this image here so let's come in here and go file save as we're going to save it as a tiff and Let's right click on here, so new folder, and we're just going to call this XX. I don't know. So this is our image 13 stars. We're going to save them 16 bit, minimize it. We want to save our image file, save as image 13 TIFF 16 bit. All right. Follow me. Okay, let's go and find who I did the bubble nebula last night with the blur exterminator. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's go in here to, where the heck are we at? Oh, new volume. 1600 Z61 Elephant Truck Nebula. Processing grief. Double X, not triple X. <laughs> let's open up those two images. We are going to say Control A and Control C to copy this image. I'm going to go over here to image 13. I'm going to drag it down a little bit and control V to paste it. We're going to take the background, this one here, they're, they're identical. Move it up. The thing I want to do before I do anything else is I just like, I love the camera raw filter. I think it, I think it uh, does so much to just subtly enhance your image. A little vibrance. I'm gonna dehaze it just a little bit and add a little clarity to it. I just can't help myself. Look at that. Just a little bit. Okay, uh, so top image is selected. Let's come down here to our stars. See our stars right here? These are stars in full, they weren't manipulated. 
and we're going to change the blending mode to screen. Back up here to the top image, go to our eraser tool, we have our flow and opacity set at 100. And then now some of these stars that seem a little, uh, come on, zoomy, zoomy, zoomy. Grief, uh, eraser tool. Now we can just turn them back on. Once again, providing depth. And as always, I'm not going to bore you with this. Look at that. Ooh, man. Some of these brighter stars, we're just popping them back on. We're saying sorry, we didn't mean it. Take it back. A lot of you other guys need to just take a bow. Take a back seat. The elephant trunk is awesome. That's all we're doing. And again, it gives the appearance that, I don't know what that little thing is down there. That is not a star, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. That's some bright ass little planetary nebula, able nebulosity, something or another. I should really know more. Uh, okay. I could do this all day, but I won't. Like, I get it, I get it, I get it. I'm done. Okay. So you can see I'm just twinkling some stars in there. Wait a minute. Now you can see. That's all we're doing. Bringing them back to life. Giving them, once again, right? I mean, if you look at this and you go, wow, look at that. Uh, uh, look, they, uh, uh, they're closer. About to run into them. And you could just turn these on to your heart's content some of these bigger ones and you can also zoom in here and you can see how this is blurry this is sharp looking you know it's just that if you were to print this image out you're like man that is awesome okay so layer flatten image um and then file save we're gonna do unamas unamas one more thing Come back in here to Pix Insight. Minimize this old image. Come here to File. Open. Reflex. Open our image 13 back up. And it's going to be called image 131 now. It adds a 1 if there's a duplicate. Um, we're going to take that range. This, uh, so this one? This one. Yeah. We're going to get that a little more sharpened. There's the mask. Mask, uh, show mask. Let's do a preview window. Let's just grab that whole area right there. And you know me, it, an MLT. I love MLT. Uh, and I already have that set up here. It's somewhere right here. MLT sharpen. These are the values. Uh, first layer, nothing. Second layer, 0 0.1. Third layer, 0.75 and fourth layer 0 0.02 uh, this is very aggressive so for this i'm not going to be that aggressive i'm going to click and i'm going to change that to 0 0.05 drag and drop so let's go in here Control shift z you can see maybe you can see we got elephanty. You can see. Just kinda yeah. Cool. Come back out. Drag and drop. Okay. So this by means was not a video to say this is exactly the end result I want. This was just to go through the steps. I probably would have done a lot more work on the color. Um, let's say remove mask. But it was to go through the steps. So definitely take your time when you're going through that to get the colors just like you want them. I think I probably would have tried to put a little more blue, a little more saturation in this. Maybe made this area a little more red. But see, like I said, that's, you know, you can just pull the green out and, and add saturation to it too. And that's, that's as pure as it gets. Um, I start to see this little tail in here. That's always cool. So yeah, that is uh, Elephant Trunk Nebula with new techniques. we got a nice, bright... God, tell me what the name of that star is in the comments, please. I swear to God. Uh, we've got 
some techniques here to create some depth you can see and I'll highlight those at the end of the video yeah might even just show you one I've already processed that wasn't a video production image as I was in love with it but yeah and this stuff up here see what I'm saying like that's amazing amazing stuff all right guys I uh, hope you have a good Christmas and until next time clear skies wait and clear minds. Yep. There you go. See ya.